My guest has a passion to help people live by every word of God, the Bible, and I am sure that you know about Precept Ministries International. I have to read the numbers because I've had to change them twice. Reaching 185 countries in 75 languages, we are talking 80 million people daily through radio, TV, and the internet. What a treat it is to be sitting with Kay Arthur. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. You know, there's a verse, uh, there's not a verse, but from uh, Exodus and Moses, and I say, any old bush will do to set on fire with the fire of God. Well, it's not the you. bush, it's the fire of God. You were making an impact in my new Christian life before this picture was taken. <laughs> this is see. the moment when I met you in oh, Kitchener, Waterloo is at the it? Women Alive Conference, 1980. Oh my goodness, we were young things. <laughs> oh, how precious, <laughs> I and love that. 16 years later, yes. we share the platform oh, ministering right here in Edmonton for Women Alive. Isn't Live. that exciting, with dear Nell Maxwell, my, how the Lord used Nell. And she says, thank you for those pictures. Much love. Well, I just, you know, you're not just a wonderful person in the kingdom. You have been a very meaningful person in my life. And thank you. You know, it's it's that many years ago. Mm -hmm. I probably haven't heard you tell your story in all these years. Been so busy with our colored pencils doing our yeah. study. <laughs> and I'm sure there are people watching who have no idea what yeah. an example you are of what God can do. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, it, Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was not poured out on me in vain, but I labored more than them all. Yet not I, but the grace of God in me. I was a brand new Christian. Uh, I was uh, led by the Lord to go to Tennessee Temple. I went to Tennessee Temple. I was uh, uh, divorced from my husband, then my, and I told God to go back after he became a Christian, and uh, and then he committed suicide. Mm. And so I he was thirty one. Yeah, he was thirty one. And so I went to Tennessee Temple, and there God told me, "You're going to marry Jack Arthur." And I mean, it was just, you know, my family didn't understand my Christianity. They were upset with me. My sister looked at me and, excuse me, this is what she said. I don't give a damn if I go to hell, leave me alone. Uh -huh. So that night, feeling like such a stranger in this, in this family where we didn't quarrel in that, I ran upstairs to the bedroom where I was staying and I fell on my knees and, uh, and I said, God, am I crazy? And God spoke to me. And, and he just laid in my heart, you're going to marry Jack Arthur. I didn't even know what he looked like. I knew he was a missionary. I knew he was from South America. I knew he had been stoned for preaching the gospel. And I came back and got his prayer card so I know what he looked like when he came along. And, uh, and he came along and uh, he married me and uh, took me to the mission field. We went to Mexico. David was born. That was our third son, uh, Jackson, my first son. And David was born and I was sitting there uh, one day, Moira, and I was working with teenagers. And I was teaching these teenagers the word of God. And, and, uh, and I was sitting there and I was nursing David and I thought, God, where were you when I was a teenager? Why didn't you send somebody like I am with these teenage girls so that I don't have to have the pain of a divorce, the pain of two marriages, children by two different fathers? God, where were you? And God, and I've never had anything audible, but God just spoke to my heart and he said this, if you will quit groaning and complaining, and share your story. If you'll remember, I saved you when I wanted to save you. And if you'll share that story, I'll use it to help others. Mm -hmm. So I know the fact that God led you to, to have me share this today, that there's someone out there that is listening, that is watching, that feels like they're a second class citizen because of their past and they would have to sit on the back row of, of the church if they ever became a Christian mm. and, and how could God accept them and how could God use them and, and, and it's grace. It's unmerited, unearned favor, but it's also understanding this. In Ephesians chapter one, 
It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now this is the hook. Just as He, God, chose us in Christ, before, so this is the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world. Hmm. We weren't an afterthought. We were not an afterthought, and we were a plan of the great scheme of God. And God just recently reminded me, don't look at this person's ministry and that person's ministry. I have a job for you to do. I want you to do the job I want you to do. And, and, and I want you to be faithful in that. And, and after I got saved, I opened the book. I opened it right side up. <laughs> uh, I opened the book and I began to read. And I thought, God, I didn't know all this. God, I, you know, why didn't I know it? And I didn't realize that when we get saved, the Holy Spirit moves inside. He becomes our in-resident tutor. He's the one that leads us and guides us into all truth. He's the one that opens the eyes of our understanding. And so it was, and I learned this later, the veil came off the word. Well then, I wanted other people to know it. But I didn't want them to have secondhand knowledge. I wanted them to know that they knew that this is what God said. Because they dug it out themselves. Because they dug it out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And see, there's so many people that, as Ephesians says, they're tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And on Christian television, you mm -hmm. get every wind of doctrine. And a lot of people are just, they're just praising the Lord to absolute air. And I think, God, they don't know. And God just burdened my heart. Teach them how to study God's Word for themselves. We have Precept Canada, and we have the neatest director, Mark Sheldrake, and Mark has a fire in his bones for establishing people and God's Word. And there's a verse in Psalm 119, verse 102, and it says, I have not turned aside from your commandments, for you yourself have taught me. And Kay, you're finding people all over the world all who are world. eager to do the work. Honey, we have Muslims coming to the Lord, studying the Word of God and laying down their lives. We have people in Uzbekistan that have been arrested and feigning and facing imprisonment and yet who will not stop. They said, we will not retreat. And see, the problem is, is we're reading all the books by people, and I'm, I've, I've written some, but we're reading the books by people, but we're not reading his book. Mm -hmm. And if I don't read his book, and if I don't know what it says, then I can't measure everything that I learn by the Word of God. So we have inductive study courses. What so excited me is we have an inductive study course on every book of the Bible called the Inductive Study Series where they can use this for their quiet time and they will know the Bible book by book. How many books did God write? 66. 66. How many does he expect us to know? <laughs> 66. How many? And I, and I would just say to the audience, very graciously, very kindly, very lovingly, and I can get away with it because I'm 79 years old. But honey, and sir, do you prefer the writings of men to the writings of God? Finite men that have limited experience and limited education to the God who is the God of all wisdom. The God who, who, who has told us in Deuteronomy and his son repeated it in, in uh, uh, the Gospels. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It says in Psalm 107, he sent his word and healed them, Moria, healed them. Mm -hmm. and delivered them from all their destructions. People were coming up to me. This woman had uh, her husband two days ago, said of 29 years, I'm leaving. She looked at me and she said, I can make it because I know God. You taught me, not me, the ministry, you taught me how to discover truth for themselves, for myself. Mm -hmm. And I know my God and I love it. Daniel 11:32b says, but the people who know their God will be able to stand firm, but not just stand there, but to take action. New exploits. I've just talked, haven't I? Well, you know what you've just shown me, Kay? What? 
the years have not diminished your energy or passion or enthusiasm a thimbleful. In fact, I think you're more on fire now than I, I am. when I first met you. And you I know am. what else is very touching what? to me? I know from your story that as a yeah. young woman, you were very moved by the heroines in the movies and yes. fancied yourself as one of them. Oh, yes. Do you know you With have my blast become off my shoulder. <laughs> a heroine? Thank you. You have a big so champion. Sweet. For the Lord and his cause and certainly his word. Thank you.